Line is hot. Today we're going to take a look at the Jericho from IWI. This is the Jericho 941. This is the famous pistol carried by Spike Spiegel, though his, in most of the uh, media I've seen, has a slide or a slide mounted safety, whereas this one has a frame mounted safety. Uh, this pistol is a very overbuilt and robust piece of equipment. Coming from a Glock 19, um, you know, it's really such a step up in quality of manufacture that it's hard to go back. I keep shooting the Glock 19 because that's what I'm familiar with, and this is not my pistol, but dang, I do want one for my own. Uh, as you can see, the lines are clean, the slide is very well melted into that frame, and it has a fairly low bore axis as well. It's just a beautiful piece of equipment and all steel. It weighs 2.4 pounds when we compare a, uh, for a, for a fixed point of comparison, a G19, this weighs 1.38 pounds empty, both of them empty. So we've got a little bit of heft here for this solid steel frame. Um, overall impression of the pistol is that the fit and finish right out of the box is incredibly nice. The reciprocation of the slide is incredibly smooth. It is just a buttery feeling with the breech dropping here. Uh, this is just so smooth to this point. And then we overcome a little bit more uh, of uh, resistance. And it's such a smooth slide on this weapon. And you can see the fit and finish is fantastic. The parkerizing is just beautiful in general. Now I've got a lot of oil on this gun, so of course you're going to see a little bit of a, maybe some fingerprints here and there, but really out of the box. It's... It's a beautiful piece of equipment. Hard plastic grips. I wish this was a rubber. That would it give you a lot more uh, purchase on this grip. Um, I find that the Glock's grip has, with all the texture, can really uh, bite into the hand more and really keeps you uh, fixed on that gun, especially as you start to get those striations on the hand from your grip. It really does a good job, even though this isn't the most recent gen of the Glock 19. Uh, I do like the fact that I do have something here to lock my grip in. The Jericho, not so much. We've got a little bit of striations here in the front and the back strap, um, but that's about it. Uh, Trigger-wise, this is a double-action, single-action pistol with no decocker. So we can't decock on a live round and drop the hammer. The only way to drop the hammer on this pistol, show clear real quick, clear. The only way to drop the hammer on this pistol, should you want to carry with the round in the chamber on double action mode, is to physically hold the hammer while you fire the pistol. Um, that seems a little dangerous. I think if you're going to carry this pistol or you want to set this up for a defensive shooting, um, you're probably going to be carrying in condition one with the safety on. Um, there's really not a good way to drop that hammer. The trigger pull itself, though, is very nice. Um, you have a short wall. There's your wall there. And a nice rolling brake, very light, very, very smooth. And when we have a uh, cycling of the action, a fairly crisp re reset. There. Maybe about a third less distance for the reset than the G19, maybe. It's definitely not as uh, a positive a reset as our G19. G19's reset is just really aggressive. Check weapon. Chamber's clear. With that very clacky, very distinct, and, and very um, positive reset. Clank. See that? Let's do it again. Clank. All right. Versus the Jericho. A little more subtle but uh, you can definitely feel it. Shorter. And when we reset right there, we, we just are given that extra silky smooth trigger pull right, right off the bat again uh, on that single action stage. Boom. Uh, the trigger is far lighter, and I think in single action this is far superior to the Glock's trigger by every metric. And this trigger uh, on the Glock has a minus connector with the New York One uh, trigger spring, so my trigger pull is a little better than a stock clock, but you can see we got a ton of 
stages and feels as we cycle this pistol's trigger through uh, its, its action. So there's a little wall, some more rolling, kind of catches, kind of chunky, and then finally, boom, there's a striker. Okay, so by, by and large, uh, this is a superior trigger. On double action, so suppose you do carry with round in the chamber and you thumb the hammer down and you want to uh, shoot that way. That first shot is going to be pretty long and, and pretty just, you know, a standard double action trigger. It's got its own stages and, and, and feel as you pull through to the wall and you pull through another a click, which is a half cock actually, and then you are finally letting the hammer go. Um, this isn't the primary mode of operation for this pistol since you I don't feel comfortable decocking it on a, a live round uh, with my thumb on the hammer. I'm just going to carry it in uh, condition one ready to go with the see that Hold on. we'll get to that in a second <clears throat> with the uh, uh, safety up and in single action far superior now that is a very interesting thing you just saw it's difficult for me to charge this weapon why in this room I don't have any air condition it's just kind of a sweaty little environment um, and this gun is greasy take a look at the slide the striations and how much purchase you have on the rear of the slide is very minimal. And I'm doing this from an awkward angle behind the camera, but I would say that um, in general the Glock is far easier to charge because you have so much more slide and so much more to grab. Okay, so this isn't a comparison tit for tat. This is just a known quantity that most shooters have handled compared to something that not every shooter has handled. And on that end, that feature right here, the fact that the slide is recessed and there's not a whole lot of um, action here to grab onto. If you're wet or sweaty or bloody, this could be difficult to charge. Okay, and if you're buying this for um, a female, uh, maybe you want a home defense pistol, and this is a fantastic home defense pistol. It, it, it recoils so smoothly and mildly because of the weight. Um, but you've got to consider manipulation and clearing of malfunctions. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. I would definitely suggest getting a, a new rear sight here with a flat edge just to get some more purchase on this grip because as you see this is smooth and my hand wants to go right over the top. So I've really got to get in here, dig in, and pull through. Uh, so for a smaller shooter, a smaller uh, female shooter in particular without a lot of uh, hand strength, i probably stick with something like a Glock uh, 17 or something along those lines. Um, so that way you don't have to worry about manipulation issues. And this is a full-size service pistol. It is quite large. I have small to medium-sized hands. I don't know which gloves. I'll go between some brands are small, some brands are wear mediums. But it's a full pistol and it's it fills the hand. So a smaller shooter, uh, maybe get them a smaller gun. But if you're confident in your, your strength and, and you're um, keeping your gun inside for, you know, um, home defense, this is a good choice. Like I said, you've got full capacity, uh, 17 rounds with one, or with one in the chamber, and you have a light rail here, which the Jerichos have um, as of, uh, since, the, since they've been made in, or brought into Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So this has been a fantastic shooting pistol. We'll get some video of that here. And overall, the fit and finish is fantastic. Yeah, we just don't like the fact that there's not a whole lot here to, to work with if you're trying to clear that as a malfunction. Let's go ahead and add the light so you can see how the profile of the Jericho is when we add some, some illumination. There we go. Very handsome, very, very nice looking weapon. Magazine wise, uses CZ75 mags and these factory ones sit flush at the bottom of the gun. Um, if you do have to clear, there's not a whole lot here to grab onto, so some extended magazines would be good. Uh, I like uh, shooting uh, some, some more mag capacity rounds in my Glock. That way, if I do have a malfunction, I can rip it out very easily. Let's see if I got one here. I do. So this is what I'm talking about. If I have a malfunction with my Glock, it's a lot easier because the Glock's floor plate is fatter in general. But I can really rip this out because it extends far past the mag well. So this is a Glock. 19 with a 17 magazine. I could really rip that mag out, clear anything that needs to be done, uh, tap and rack again. So that's uh, that's what I do here. I would like some more purchase on the factory magazines, but you can get a floor plate on your own and make that upgrade. Mags drop out beautifully, by the way. They are so smooth and they feel um, far superior to the 
G19's magazine in construction. I, I know the G19 magazines have been around, G17 magazines have been around for decades without issue, um, but these feel fantastic. Um, just gotta watch out for rust, I guess, and they're a blued magazine, comes with two. Dot sights, nothing right home about, however, they are uh, steel uh, from the factory and you can drift them for windage in the front and the rear. That's good. Um, definitely a superior product here to compared to the, the standard Glock 19. Um, and again, I, I really think that if you buy this pistol or get a chance to shoot this pistol, that trigger is going to surprise you. It's just a light, beautiful trigger and you can really hammer rounds down range. Alright, so let's get to the shooting part of this video review and we'll take a look and see how things went. I stepped out with the Jericho on a beautiful sunny Sunday afternoon. The Jericho was loaded with, um, I had two magazines that were sitting loaded for a number of months here with some Winchester Wally World value pack ammunition. I don't find that that's the best quality of ammunition. As you see, I had a failure to feed, and I'll have another one here in a minute. Um, but in general, it functioned with this ammunition. What I think about the Jericho, and having tested it with multiple sources of ammo over, over the months prior to the video, um, I think it likes uh, hot NATO loads. It probably loves good self-defense loads. And uh, anything that's too weak, it's going to have a hard time cycling that, that heavy steel slide. Um, same issue I had with uh, some weekly load of ammo in my G17, which I no longer own. I don't have a G17 anymore. Um, functioned just fine, that same ammo, in my G19. So, you know, perhaps a little bit of wear-in has to do with it, and perhaps a little bit of um, the weight of the slide has to do with it, but uh, some ammo guns just don't like. And for WW Wally World Value Pack ammunition, yeah, I'm probably going to stay away from it. What I did want to test, though, was the steel-cased ammunition. It's important that we have a gun that runs with good steel case ammunition. Uh, you got to practice. If you're not a reloader, the best way to put in some practice time is with some steel ammunition. So this was some uh, Monarch Academy brand uh, steel ammunition, steel case, and this is, I believe, from Barnall. I had good success with this ammunition. The gun liked it. It must be a, a much or a little bit hotter loading than the Wally World Value Pack, and the Jericho had no issues cycling. It. Sorry for the camera, it started to dip down a bit so we can't see the target as easily. Um, but no malfunction with this ammunition. Next up was some 124 grain uh, Winchester NATO that I had on hand. Uh, it functions just fine with this. Good positive ejection. Pattern is typically at my anywhere from uh, 4 o'clock, uh, some that are closer to uh, um, 5 o'clock, but overall good strong ejection. Gun recoils just so pleasantly. It's such a smooth slide and the beaver tail at the back is just beautiful. The gun handles very well. Despite my practice session here, you know, this is, uh, you know, I shoot this, I don't shoot this gun every uh, weekend, so I did my best to, to try to run this gun as best as I could, and I feel like with a little bit more practice, I'd be able to pick up this gun and really run it uh, at a USPSA event or something similar. It's such a smooth shooter. Perhaps you may have noticed this at some point in the video that um, the Jericho likes to release its slide with a nice pad on the bottom. You see that? Um, when you have this gun empty or when you're loading a single round or a fresh magazine topped off uh, 15 rounds, it likes to drop the slide without too much, uh, too much trouble. Just slap that bottom and there goes the slide. Here I'll demonstrate with one steel round. Empty gun. Let's pull it back again. Slap that mag in. Now is that a feature you want? Mm, probably not. I think it could lead to some malfunctions or some unintentional slide releases when you're um, working on the gun uh, at an event, but it's there. So if you want that or don't want it, I don't know, but it's there. You can easily pop that slide uh, on a, uh, a full mag or on an empty gun. If magazine's in place, it doesn't do anything. The follower keeps that uh, slide release up. 
There we go again. See that? Easy. I mean, I guess it could be helpful in certain situations. You can definitely reload it faster. Um, but um, let's go ahead and get this gun dirty. I want to see how it does with a lot of particulate matter on every crevice of the firearm. I think a solution like this with a lot of particulate is an excellent way to uh, test some of these firearms just to get that stuff everywhere. Because when you douse the gun in dirt and dust, yeah, superficially it could work its way into some of the crevasses and, and nooks and crannies of the gun. But when you have uh, turbid fluid like this, that you run this gun on the bottom of, of the pond and, and soaked up some of that, uh, that crud, you know, it's going to make a big difference. That stuff is everywhere on this gun and I can feel it. When I cycle the slide here, that is... Yeah, it, it really feels nasty. It feels like there's a fine grit sandpaper uh, coating everything about this gun. I was thinking, you know, it's probably going to fail. It, this is kind of nasty stuff, but it kept trucking. Uh, this is with the steel core stuff. It had no malfunctions or failures to feed uh, after having the grit worked through it. Now, one thing to think about on pistol reliability is not just, you know, how, how, um, how good the design is as far as the slide and the feed ramp, but also the magazine. If you've got crud all over the magazine, you know, you're possibly going to run into issues as that magazine is trying to push uh, those rounds up the stack. And there's your slide cycling. You know, if there's crud in the magazine slowing down the uh, feed rate, then you're probably going to get low hits on the feed ramps. So the gun, the Jericho, had no issues. The magazine, even though it was just as gritty, and uh, the slide it really had no malfunctions. And I continue to shoot it here, in this case, with the 124 grain ammunition, and the gun just runs. Smooth Jericho, or smooth IDI. You did a pretty good job on this uh, CZ clone. It's running with some pretty thick gunk. The next question on everybody's mind is how does it run in a maritime environment? Obviously, if you're operating from a fishing trawler or perhaps you have this on your hip in a kayak, uh, it might, might pique your curiosity to know if it can shoot underwater. Well, let's try it. One, two, three, four, five. Five rounds, uh, no issues. And you know, the drink is going to slow the slide down a little bit. I mean, it's obviously quite a bit thicker than the atmosphere that water is, you know. So I'm, I'm surprised that it cycled without any issues. Uh, pretty neat. Kind of useless, yeah. But hey, this is a review. We're having fun. We're on YouTube. Uh, and let's review this pistol. The final step here was just to burn all my 124 grain uh, rounds. The slide is still dirty, it's still gritty, it doesn't feel very nice. Um, it needs to go home and have a WD-40 bath, I realize that. Um, but we look, we still have strong ejection. Um, we have the, the last round, or excuse me, the magazine hold open on the last round. And everything's running fine. Um, it's just such a pleasure to shoot. You know, if this is going to be a home defense gun, maybe not for... Um, you know, someone that's a little weak on the wrist, it's hard to charge. And I didn't have it in the video, but yeah, when it was muddy, it was hard to, to charge that slide. It was difficult. So if you're going to be wet or dirty and you're shooting this gun, you might have difficulty clearing some malfunctions or getting it to charge if your own hands are wet. Uh, the other deficit being that the slide releases when you tap its uh, tap the, um, the grip a little hard. Uh, that's not a feature I want, but it's there. Um, but overall, it's just a really good shooting pistol. It's a full-size service pistol. It's heavy. Perhaps you already have a Glock and you're looking for something different. Uh, but the Jericho performs. I mean, if you want to, you know, deal with the limited holster options and get the Jericho just because you need something to your collection, or you just like the fact that it's awesome and Spike Spiegel uses it, it's a good pistol. Um, past its quirks, it, you know, is it as good as the Glock 19? Uh, no, I'd probably get a Glock 19 first, but in general, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend a uh, Jericho because it really does perform well. It's a, a very smooth shooter. It's ergonomic. It's got weight. It's got robustness, uh, and it operates in um, you know conditions that are, are that are fairly poor. And it didn't have any malfunctions in those poor conditions. So if you're looking for a really nice piece to add to your collection or you're looking for a home defense uh, weapon and you're willing to deal with the issues with the manipulation of the pistol or at least get some, you know, get some rounds down range and get some own personal training, uh, this would be a really good pistol for that. Uh, I don't have any qualms about it. If you're willing to deal with those issues, 
then yeah, I could recommend the Jericho. Good competition pistol for for limited competition uh, or for irons. You know, just getting uh, brushing up on your your iron shooting with a pistol. It's a really nice gun. Uh, good job, IWI. I think you've really brought something over or brought something back that the market needed. It, it's a quality pistol. Uh, retails for around 4.99 if I recall. And um, yeah, I'd give it my recommendation, my limited recommendation. Deal with the issues, know what you're buying, and uh, enjoy the pistol. All right, New Rifleman, signing out.